Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this time we're focused on shutter speed. The reason photographers care about shutter speed is that it's the part of the picture taking process that basically is the timer for the light coming into the camera. And depending on how long that shutter stays open, you can get motion blur or you can prevent it. Because most photographers want sharp pictures with zero blur, lots of beginners think that they should start with the fastest shutter speed possible and just freeze action. And outside during the day, there's usually enough light for fast shutter speed. But if it's darker like indoors or when the sun's not out, there may not be enough light for that super fast shutter speed. When that happens, you can try changing some other camera settings like using a wider lens opening, we call that the aperture, or making the camera sensor more sensitive by increasing the ISO setting. But both of those settings have limits, so at some point you either need to slow down the shutter or add more light so that you can keep the shutter speed fast enough to freeze your action. But there are times when you don't want to eliminate all blur because it can be used artistically to show motion, even in still images. For example, if your shutter speed is set really fast and you photograph a passing car, it can look like it's parked. So a shot of a parked car tells a different story than one with motion blur. So if you pan with that passing car and your shutter speed stays open a little longer, you can catch the blur of the pavement and the background and the spinning wheels. It takes a little practice to pan at the same speed as a passing car, but it's usually pretty easy to find some place that there's lots of traffic to hone your skills. Is this safe? Another cool effect of leaving the shutter open for a second or even several seconds, especially during night photography, is that moving lights can make beautifully artistic light trails. Maybe it's a car headlight or taillights or maybe it's fireworks or one of my favorite things to shoot, burning steel wool being swung around by somebody in the image. Using that same long shutter technique but drawing in the air with a flashlight is how people do light painting. The thing is with most of these long shutter photographs, you want a steady camera by using a tripod and you'll probably want to use a remote remote shutter release cable so that your camera stays perfectly still. Also, on lots of DSLRs, there's a shutter speed marked bulb. That just means that when you press and hold the shutter button or the remote release button, the shutter stays open until you let go of that button. So let's talk about shutter speeds and characteristics of some of those shutter speeds. When I was taking photography classes in college with a film SLR camera, my professor said that a good rule of thumb is that you can expect steady shots while hand holding at 1 60th of a second or faster. Now, with good camera technique, you might be able to get to around a 30th of a second, but that works for something like a 50 millimeter lens. Long zoom lenses amplify movement, so you need an even faster shutter speed. I always shoot 1 500th of a second, or faster, to capture all the action. Technology has improved things though because these days lots of quality lenses have built-in optical image stabilization or vibration reduction. That compensates for natural human hand movement so that you can shoot at even slower shutter speeds even with really long zoom lenses. And some cameras, like this one from Sony, have image sensors in the camera body that counteract hand movement and minimize motion blur. On lots of modern DSLRs, you can set the shutter speed as slow as 30 seconds or as fast as a thousandth or a two thousandth or even some cameras boast shutter speeds like an eight thousandth of a second or even faster. If you want to play with different shutter speeds and you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, and this will even work with some point and shoots, you can put it in shutter priority mode and then pick the shutter speed. The camera is going to adjust all the other stuff just to help you get a good exposure. Beyond pure shutter speed, there's something called lag time, and that's the time between when you press the shutter button and the shutter actually opens. With most modern DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, and even a lot of point and shoots, this is usually so short you won't even notice. But with cell phone cameras, it's pretty common to press that shutter button and think you're done, and then hear that fake shutter sound a second or two later. Dang it! Another shutter speed related aspect of some cameras is something that not all of them can do and it's called high speed burst. If your camera has a burst shooting mode available, then you can just hold down that shutter button and it'll take one picture right after the other. High end pro cameras like this Canon 1DX can shoot up to 14 shots a second and each of those shots can have shutter speeds as fast as one eight thousandth of a second. This next part about flash photography is going to get a little camera geeky. So when you're using a flash with your camera, whether it's a built-in flash or an add-on flash or even a studio flash, 
That adds some shutter speed limitations, but it also gives you some artistic possibilities. Depending on your camera model, the fastest shutter speed that you'll be able to work with with a flash is usually in the range of 1 160th of a second to 1 250th of a second. You want to look for the flash sync speed spec on your camera to see what you're allowed to do. So that means if you use a flash at 1 500th of a second, you'll probably end up with a band of properly lit exposure and a band of dark underexposure. This happens because shutters don't open from the middle. If they did, the middle of all your images would be more exposed than the top and the bottom. Instead, they open from the top or the bottom. Then the opening edge of the first shutter travels to the opposite edge and then is followed by the second shutter. Now this needs to happen. That flash needs to fire when both shutter doors are all the way open and the whole sensor is exposed. But when the shutter speed is faster than the camera's stated flash sync speed, like 1 250th of a second, that second shutter starts to close before the first shutter finishes opening all the way. And the faster the shutter speed, the narrower the slit, so the flash might only light up a stripe of your image. You might see that some cameras have a special feature called high speed sync, but that requires a special flash which can strobe in exact synchronization with the moving slit opening so that you get one pulse of flash for every part of the image sensor that's exposed. It's actually amazing technology. At this point you should know that if you're working in relatively low light you need to leave the shutter open for a little while to gather enough ambient light for an exposure. Moving subjects might appear blurred but if you fire a flash during that longer exposure you'll have some aspect of your image frozen because the flash burst not the shutter speed will freeze the action. The flash can be when the shutter first opens. That's called first curtain shutter. Or when it's about to close, that's the second or the final curtain shutter. Now, so far I've been talking about mechanical shutters, which is what most cameras have, but some cameras have digital shutters and some of those can have even faster sync speeds and super fast shutter speeds. But with video, they talk about frame rates. Is that different than shutter speed? Great question, but we'll talk about frame rates and how they're different from shutter speed in another video. One focused video, one topic. That wraps it up for this episode of Focus. Focus is made possible thanks to B&H, Kelby One, and these nice people. If you have any questions for us, leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe because we don't want you to miss a single episode. We'll see you next time.